Hello friends, some residents had requested me for a video on the instrumentation of dynamic hip screw. So in today's video, I will be showing you all the instruments that are required for dynamic hip screw placement. What are their usage? So the first instrument that we use is the angle guide. The angle guide is used for placement of the guide wire for the leg screw. So you see this is the angle guide. This hole is meant for placement of the guide wire and you place this angle guide towards the lateral surface like this because this guide wire has to go in the supplementary direction so this hole is meant for the guide wire and you drill the guide wire towards this track so the guide wire passes like this like this so this is the first instrument once you have passed the guide wire in appropriate position then you have to use the direct measuring device so this is the direct measuring device you see there are markings over here suppose the guide wire is ending over here on the lateral cortex so this direct measuring device has to be passed over the guide wire like this then it will show the marking over here you see it is coming out to be 100 so we have to use the leg screw of 100 millimeter and the triple reamer has to be set to 100 so this instrument is clear this is the direct measuring device which tells about the size of the leg screw so now the guide wire is in place now you have to set your triple reamer after that so if the screw is coming out to be less than 85 millimeter then we have to use this short barrel triple reamer but in case if it is coming out to be more than 85 millimeter then we have to use the long barrel triple reamer so you see the difference this is the short barrel triple reamer this is long barrel triple reamer because in because in longer screws we need a longer barrel plate while in short screws we need a short barrel plate so we have to select the triple reamer accordingly now if you see the triple reamer it has this knob this knob is meant for loosening of this outer reamer so once it is loosened up we have to fully loosen it up now you have to see the marking here see the marking is there i just focus it you see it is 95 then 100 then 105 so this part should be visible the outer part should be visible so we have to set the triple reamer to 100 so we want the position like this now it is set to 100 once that is done you have to tighten the knob fully you see we are tightening it and once it is fully tightened it will automatically end up at 100 you see it is ending up at 100 after locking it in 100 marking you have to pass the streamer over the guide where you have already inserted then clean the track and this part this proud part should enter the lateral cortex you need not to go beyond this part because this is the area where the reaming should end you should not go beyond this area otherwise there will be chances of perforation of the lateral cortex so this step is clear the next step is tapping for tapping you need the tap sleeve this is the tap sleeve uh, there are actually two sleeves one is for tapping and one is for the screw placement the narrower one is for the tap and while the larger one is actually for the screw you see the tap is loose in this sleeve so we have to use this sleeve this is perfectly fitting the tap and this is a tap you see the terminal part is threaded and it's made for cutting the threads inside the bone which will help in inserting the leg screw again you see there are markings so the tapping has to be done according to the size of the leg screw if the appropriate screw size is 100 as we have checked in the previous step then we have to tap till this area so this part actually goes inside the tunnel you have created with the triple reamer and you will be able to see this marking over this hole for 100 marking you will have to see the junction of the bone and the tap sleeve so suppose the tap sleeve is inserted over this point now for 100 you have to see this space then the tapping will be done at the 100 marking so this step is clear and for attaching the tap you need a t handle so you have to insert the tap inside the sleeve like this that is the first step after that you have to insert the t handle so the t handle will lock the tap and this part will remain inside the bone and the turns that you will perform will push the tap inside the bone and create a track for the leg screw so this is the assembly for tapping now after that once you have tapped you need to insert the leg screw now this sleeve is for the leg screw you see this is a wider one 
and for leg screw insertion you need the leg screw first so this is the leg screw you see the cross section of the leg screw is elongated in one plane that means that means in barrel it cannot rotate it will only slide i'll be showing you in the next steps so for insertion of the leg screw you need a coupler device first you see there are fenestration on the terminal part of the leg screw and here you attach this coupling device it has corresponding fenestrations that will lock it inside the leg screw and after doing this you have to use this threaded device which is actually the part of coupling mechanism only you have to insert this coupling device over this hollow locking device and bring the threads out like this so this will be the assembly and once you tighten it like this you will be able to grab this coupling device with the leg screw you see this is a single assembly now it has been perfectly locked with each other then you have to insert this assembly inside the sleeve like this and after that you have to use the T wrench which will have cross section matching with the cross section of the leg screw you see this is the T wrench and this part is the area which will get inserted over the leg screw it is also elongated in cross section in one plane that allows it to be locked with the leg screw for example this is another leg screw you see there is a flat surface on two sides and it will get inserted over the t wrench only in one particular plane you see it is not going inside but now it is going so it will get inserted inside the t wrench only in one plane and you see i am not able to rotate it it is getting locked inside the t wrench so you have to pass the t wrench over this assembly of sleeve and the leg screw attached with the coupler like this so it will it will lock the leg screw in this particular position now you see if i am rotating the t wrench it is actually rotating the leg screw and through this sleeve you will be able to see the junction of the coupler device and the leg screw so the moment you are going inside the bone you will be able to see how much you have inserted the leg screw inside the bone suppose if the lateral cortex is coming out to be here you can slightly loosen up the t wrench outwards like this to see what is the area of locking between the coupling device and the leg screw so you will be able to see this junction and that junction tells how much the leg screw has been inserted so if you are able to see this much area that means the leg screw is inside the bone if you want to insert the leg screw more you can give few more turns inside like this then you will be able to see that the junction is not visible that means the leg screw is slightly in inside the lateral cortex that you can check in the c arm also so this step is clear now the next thing is the insertion of the barrel over the leg screw so you have to remove the t wrench so this part will be proud outside the lateral cortex like this because this part is the junction you see the screw is inside like this again in this coupling device also you see there is a flat surface which matches with the leg screw flat surface on both sides now if you have to pass the barrel plate then you can actually trust this area and also whenever you are putting the leg screw you have to ensure that this flat surface matches with the axis of the lateral surface that means the flat surface should come perfectly in anterior plane and the posterior plane it should not come like this that means in superior or inferior plane it has to come in anterior and posterior plane because only then the barrel will be able to match the axis of the lateral surface of femur i'll show you so suppose this much area is proud so this much area is proud outside the bone if when you are placing the barrel plate now you have for barrel plate also you have to ensure which barrel you want if the leg screw is a larger one that means more than 80 or 85 mm then you have to select the long barrel plate so this is the long barrel plate the length is around 38 mm and this plate is the short barrel plate which has length of around 25 mm so you have to check which one you are going to use so you have to slide the barrel plate over this area then slightly toggle it like this it should match the surfaces now you see the cross section of the barrel also it is flat in two planes i'll just focus it you see it is flattened in anteroposterior plane but circular in the top part and in the lower part so it matches with the cross section of the leg screw so you have to match the cross section of the barrel with the cross section of the coupling device terminal part 
because that is going to match with the plane of the leg screw also. So this much part is under your direct vision. You have to pass the barrel like this. Once that is done, then you can simply push the barrel over the leg screw like this. So if you are facing resistance, even after inserting the barrel over the coupling device, then what you can do, you can simply loosen this coupling device. The guide wire is already there. So the barrel will not go in any other area. Just loosen the coupling device like this. It will come out. And then what you can do, you can simply place this pushing device and give gentle hammers. That will slide the barrel over the leg screw till you reach the lateral cortex like this. So once that step is clear, you can remove your guide wire now. And after that, once the barrel has been positioned in a correct position, you have to attach the Richard screw or the compression screw. So the compression screw or Richard screw is like this. You see it has hex screw slot and it will get inserted over the leg screw. The leg screw has threads inside which matches with the threads of the Richard screw. You see like this. And for this assembly, it has to be inserted over the barrel. You will have to use a 4.5mm screwdriver for inserting it. But do not tighten it in the initial step. Why? I will tell you. So you have to just insert the Richard screw inside the leg screw. And once you have secured the entry, you can just keep it loose for some time. And after that, you have to drill the lower screws first. That means you have to insert the screws in the lower part first. And you have to make this surface flush with the lateral cortex first. So suppose this is the lateral cortex. Suppose your DHS plate is lying like this. If you tighten this screw in the initial steps, what will happen? This area will get compressed and the plate will become more proud. So you have to ensure that the plate is perfectly touching the lateral surface. So you have to insert the screws in the lower slots first, tighten those screws and only after that you have to tighten the Richard screw. I'll show you how the Richard screw is function. Suppose this area is inside the bone. I've made a marking over here like this. And this part is flush with the lateral cortex like this. Now if I tighten the Richard screw, see what happens. You see the greed area is going inside the barrel. And why that is happening? Because the Richard screw is actually pulling the leg screw outwards. And in that mechanism, what will happen? There will be compression at the fracture side. If I loosen it up again, you see I'll be able to see that green marking again. I'll show you. You see the green marking is coming out. It means by the church screw you can actually gain compression. Only thing you need to do is to keep the leg screw slightly short of the lateral cortex. If the leg screw is ending outside the lateral cortex then what will happen? This area of the leg screw will actually be proud over the barrel. Then any tightening of this part will not help because you will not be able to pull the screw outwards. So your screw should not end like this over the lateral cortex. It should be like this so that the pull mechanism of the Richard screw is functioning at its best. And often there is confusion regarding this device. So what is the use of this device? You see this device is not cannulated. That means it is not for the insertion of the leg screw. It is for the removal of the leg screw. So you see here it has threads over here. These threads actually lock inside the leg screw like this. So for removal assembly you again need a T wrench. That means, that means this device along with the sleeve and this part has to be inserted over the T-wrench and, and entered inside the leg screw. And if you tighten it up, it will gain hold inside the leg screw. You see, I'll be able to pull the leg screw. So rotating it will be helpful for removal of the leg screw. So for implant removal surgeries, you need this non cannulated coupling device, which helps in engaging the threads of the leg screw and once you have removed the leg screw you can simply loosen up this assembly like this. So I hope all the interpretations regarding the dynamic hip screw placement are clear. If you have any doubts you can just put those in comments. Thank you.